my, my job is to somehow make them curious enough or persuade them by hook or crook to get more aware of themselves and where they came from and what they are into and what is already there and just to bring it out. This is what compels me to compel them. And I will do it by whatever means necessary. Welcome to the Black Girls Heal podcast, where we talk about healing our intimacy disorders, unresolved trauma, and building a healthy relationship with first ourselves and then others. Every episode, we will talk about advice you can apply today to break unhealthy patterns and grow in your self-worth. I'm Sheena Lachey, Love Addiction Coach and Trauma Specialist. Let's begin. Hello, hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Black Girls Heal. So the holiday season is in full effect. We are all slowing down a little bit. Um, Many of us are traveling. Many of us are just trying to keep our heads on straight And so for this week, I thought it would be best to just keep it simple and for us to revisit one of our previous episodes, one that I know that there was a lot of conversation and topics about and questions about. And so hopefully this is one that is an oldie, but a goodie, one that you can get a lot of benefit from. This season right now is where I'm also in a lot of reflection too, with where I want to take BGH in 2024. Um, We have covered so many things and there's still so much to cover as well as we go from being love addicted to love balance, love avoidant to love available and being our love deprivation to feeling more love nourished and healing from trauma and having healthy relationships and healthy friendships and most importantly, a healthy sense of self. And so I'm doing a lot of reflection around that while I finish writing our books and everything else. And so as part of the audience, if you have any thoughts about what you would love to see me focus on more in 2024 or to keep focusing on um, the topics, the the tips, the support that you have found the most helpful, please feel free to share that. Share that wherever it is that you listen to this podcast, whether or not I know a lot of you send comments via Spotify for my Spotify listeners. Um, there's different places that you can comment with what you've learned in the episode. Feel free to share it there. My YouTube ladies, of course, on social media and via email. However, whatever is the most easiest for you, we'll love that feedback because I want to make sure that 2024 is a year that we all continue to grow and move towards what it is that we want. So that is it for now, keeping it short and sweet so we can jump into this podcast episode. Again, this is a a former episode. So um, all of the most updated ways to work together are on the website. The recovery school is always home. And uh, in the at the top of 2024 in January, I will actually be leading people through a live cohort um, and walking people through the curriculum week by week. My support is already a part of the program, obviously, but I know that the new year is when many people want to revisit a lot of things, and that includes my alumni as well. And so I want to be walking us through, making sure that we are getting everything that we want in 2024 and nothing is being left at the table. So if you're interested in working together, you can check out therecoveryschool.com to learn more. And that is it for now. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Before we get started, let's take a small break to say thank you to this week's sponsors. So speaking of the recovery school, you know, I'm helping a lot of women through their relationship issues. And even the people who are not my students, when I talk to women who are still figuring out if they want to start their healing process, Um, there are a lot of reservations in case you're new to my platform. Whenever I'm talking to women who are consistently in relationships with people who are unavailable, I talk about how your first step is to do a detox, um, and to go into no contact with people who are unhealthy for you. And so 
There's a lot of um, different reasons that people give me why they can't do it. Um, or even if it's not reasons why they can't do it, there's a lot of reasons that people may try to negotiate doing it halfway. And one of the things that I hear often is they will want to disconnect from all the other old people in their life. But when it comes to the people who are currently there, they're not willing to do so because it's newer, because um, they want it to work out, because they may be stuck in their fantasy. But one, one excuse, I'm just going to call it an excuse, um, that I hear often is that they want to practice with them. And by practicing, they mean practicing their healthy communication skills. They want to practice setting their boundaries. They want to practice communicating what they want. And so they don't really see the point in letting go of this um, connection when uh, they can be healthy. Like they, they're they learning what are the healthy things to do. So they want to have a person to implement it with, right? Um, what's the point of wasting time, wasting the possibility that could be a healthy relationship? Like this is newer, even if it's not new, I'm working on me. So isn't this a good opportunity for me to use to practice what I'm learning. And while I get that, we are not talking about just regular attachments, just regular me learning how to communicate what I need and fear of rejection and fear of sounding silly. Um, it's not just that that we're talking about when we talk about love addiction. What we're talking about is that you may have a unhealthy dependence and attachment on this relationship or the fantasy of what the relationship could be, or on just being in a relationship in general. And so the idea of not having that or not having that person causes a whole lot of fear in you because you have created them to be the end all be all, right? If I take any time, take a step back, reassess what's going on with me, reassess if I'm actually healthy, I may lose this person. I may lose my chance. And usually this is part of a bigger narrative that you have in your life. You have a bigger narrative that things just don't work out for you, that you have to take what's in front of you, that you have to make it work. Um, even if you um, don't necessarily make everything work, maybe you're someone I, I, I often say like, um, maybe you're a cutoff queen or someone who's very good at like, um, someone does something that's distasteful to you or that you don't like and you immediately cut them off. Either way, your processes around, around this are unhealthy and we got to reset them. We have to get you to a place where you can think clearly and not act in a way to where you may actually sacrifice what you want, overlook red flags, um, and try to make something work that you shouldn't work. So I have a masterclass um, where I talk about the method that I teach in my recovery school. And I've re-recorded it a few times, um, many times. <laughs> um, it just it just grows as I grow and as like um, the stories of my students change and stuff like that. But as I've changed it, at the very beginning of this masterclass, I talk about three mistakes that people make when it comes to their relationships, depending on what the topic is. I've changed the topic a couple of times. And um, right now, the three mistakes that people make that they need to avoid is different, but I used to have one mistake on there that everybody makes in their relationships that makes them stay toxic and unhealthy. And I said, it's trying to communicate what you need to other people. Now, I know that that is possibly shocking. Like how could that be unhealthy? You trying to communicate what you need. And I go on to explain in this older version of the masterclass that it is not you communicating that's unhealthy. That's actually a good thing, right? Like obviously you communicating what you need and just period is a good thing. The problem is when you're communicating this in a relationship with someone who is unavailable, who is unable to give you what you want, you are wasting your time. You are inviting moments of rejection, moments of shame, moments of feeling like you're too much and like you're the problem. 
you are um, creating a lot of negative energy and stress around a relationship that from inception was not going to be a good fit for you, but you're trying to make it work. So if I'm talking to someone who just doesn't know how to tell the truth and I'm telling him over and over, I really just need you to communicate what's going on with me. And it really hurts my feelings when you lie. And it really makes me feel not enough when you choose to only tell me parts of the story, but not the other parts. That makes sense. Like that is all like legitimate, healthy ways to communicate what you need to somebody um, who may be hurting you. Bravo. However, when you are constantly giving it to someone who either cannot give it back to you or does not want to give it back to you, you are recreating your trauma every single time. On Christmas Day, the holiday movie event of the year arrives. The Color Purple comes to life for a whole new generation. Boldly reimagined by producers Oprah Winfrey, Steven Spielberg, Scott Sanders, and Quincy Jones, The Color Purple is a timeless celebration of family, lifelong friendship, and unconditional love. And it's a faithful reminder that nothing is stronger than the bonds that tie us. The Color Purple is being hailed as a show-stopping crowd pleaser. Early audiences are calling it a breathtaking triumph. Gorgeously crafted and a flawlessly executed vision from director Blitz Bazawule. This holiday season experienced a bold new take on this beloved classic on the big screen, surrounded by family and friends. Starring Taraji P. Henson, Daniel Brooks, Coleman Domingo, Corey Hawkins, Her, Halle Bailey, Felicia Pearl and Posse, and Fantasia Barino. The Color Purple. Only in theaters Christmas Day, rated PG-13, may be inappropriate for children under 13. It's the holiday season and the hustle and the bustle is in full effect. Between shopping, the office parties, and just keeping up with the normal everyday to-do list, it can get really hard to prioritize yourself and your health. This holiday season, make your life a million times easier with Factor's nutritious, flavorful meals to fuel your jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian-approved, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Crossing meal prepping off my list has been an absolute game changer. Factor delivers their fresh, never frozen, already prepared meals straight to my door. They're ready in just two minutes, so all I have to do is heat and enjoy. Head to factormeals.com slash bgh50 and use code BGH50 to get 50% off. That's code BGH50 at factormeals.com slash BGH50 to get 50% off. Um, and then over time, if you do not continue to build your own internal stress around why isn't he listening to me or she, depending on who you're in a relationship with, but I'm heterosexual. So I'm using an example of he, if, if I'm not causing my own internal turmoil, the other extreme I can go to is start to take on, well, maybe I am asking too much, or maybe I need to take into account that he has his own trauma that he's gone through, or I know that he just exited this relationship. And so that's probably why, or he told me he was scared to tell me the truth about this because he didn't want to hurt my feelings. And so I get that. And so I'm not really going to be that mad at him for that, but I'm just going to tell him that this is what I want. And you're constantly making allowances and excuses for poor behavior, for behavior that hurts you, right? So when my ladies tell me that they want to use this relationship to practice, I'm like, this is a relationship that already from its structure is not good for you, right? We've already gone through, you've told me how you've met. You've told me about what's been going on so far. You've told me about your concerns. You told me about all these different things that we already see that this looks like is history repeating itself. And so let's go ahead and reset this now. Let's go ahead and take this little bit of time, these 90 days, I teach women to take 90 days um, to kind of reset and look at you, look at taking care of you. So I think now, you know, especially with this scene that this will probably be extending for a while it's probably a really good time to be doing that reset. Um, And it looks differently than I think a lot of people are doing right now. I think um, one of the biggest mistakes that people make when it comes to 
detoxes is they just go numb and they just um, go ghost in all areas and they call that working on them time. But really you're not learning how to connect and attach to other people. So when you come out of your detox, all the problems stay the same. So I really encourage you to make the most of your time that if you are ready for a reset, that you actually do the whole process, do the whole steps, do it all the way through. I was actually talking with one of my audience members earlier this week um, for, actually, no, it wasn't one of, just one of my audience members. It was one of my bonus club members. Um, she was the one who had won the free coaching call. And we were talking about just some things that were that she was going through and working through. And she had talked about how she wanted to join the main coaching program, but she didn't really have the investment for it right now. But she was really wanting to do the detox. And so I told her, you know, I've been thinking about just carving out that portion of the main program and letting people go ahead and get started on it. Um, go ahead and get their 90 days under their belt. Go ahead and start that healing process. Um, but I hadn't really decided and she was like, do it. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I guess that's confirmation. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, for the first time, I am going to offer as its own little standalone little package our no contact and detox process. Um, it is very different than just taking a year sabbatical from dating or relationships. Very different. So, which I think is why it is so successful whenever people come out of it, when they follow the process the way that I tell you to, you really exit out of it with a lot of clarity. So if you are wanting to know about the Black Girls Heal process for no contact and detox, you can get the no contact and detox kit by going to blackgirlsheal.org slash no contact. I'm going to put it out this Friday. Um, if you're listening to this podcast live. So if you go there now to blackgirlsheal.org slash no contact, you'll be able to add your name to the wait list. And then on Friday, when it is ready, I will send out that email to everyone. And if you're listening to this in the future, then you can go ahead and go ahead and get started um, with all the worksheets, with all the videos. Um, when I say it's a process, it's a process. So <laughs> that will hopefully be helpful to um, those of you who are wanting to get started. I know that you can do it, even if it's someone that you've been trauma bonded with, even if it's a situation that you've been going back and forth for years, for years, recycling this problem, you can do it. I believe in you. Um, and I'm going to give you the steps to do it. So um, again, blackgirlsheal.org slash no contact. Now, so this is the end of the episode, but when I originally recorded this episode, this is not where it ended. I continued to talk about the concept of taking time for yourself and what that might look like if you're in a relationship with someone that you may think is unavailable. If you were in a long-term committed partnership um, and or married, what that might look like. And in that episode, I went through like different scenarios, multiple options, and it just didn't sit right. It felt like it kind of got away from the original point of not trying to get someone who's not able to give you what you need to give you what you need. <laughs> um, it's, it felt like it got away from that lesson that I'm trying to teach here. So I've cut all that out. Um, but what I do want to leave you with in case you are someone who's listening and you are saying, well, I am in a long-term committed partnership. I'm not necessarily just dating anymore. So, um, it's a little bit more messy for me. What does that, what does this mean for me? Because I have questions and I am needing some support. Um, I am a big advocate for couples therapy. I'm a big advocate for you going to get support um, from a neutral other um, who can help you see, is this a you thing? Is this a them thing? Or is it a you together thing or a little bit of both or more one than the other, right? Um, so that would be my best suggestion for you. 
If you're in a partnership with someone who does not want to do that, then you need to go ahead and do your own work. You know, the most cohesive theme that I had in my original version for people who are in long-term or in committed partnerships and you're confused on what does this mean for you, um, is still that you need to do your own work. Even if you were to go to a couples therapist, if there are like deeply entrenched problems, a good couples therapist will refer you to figuring out what is What's going on with you? What are your triggers? How's your trauma impacting the relationship? Um, what are your real expectations? You know, you could be in a partnership where you've been minimizing what you've wanted for years and years and years, and it now it's coming up, um, or even months and months, because I know some people are deeply entangled in relationships that are newer, um, and that could be part of your trauma, your trauma bonding, or something else. So. If you're listening to this and you relate to being deeply entrenched with someone after a couple of months and things are really crazy, um, that's probably your love addiction um, that's coming out right now. Um, There is really not any scenario that after a few months um, of, of connection that's worth the chaos and drama if there's no other things that are tying you together, if there's no kids, if there's no property, you are free to let go. You are free to find a relationship that serves you. And if that is hard for you, um, I want to really encourage you to look at why is that hard? Why am I so attached to keeping a relationship that is harming me emotionally, mentally, spiritually, maybe even physically in some ways, um, instead of finding a relationship that is easier, that is mutually beneficial, that brings me peace. Um, what is it in me that feels like this is the best that I can get? That's the work that is there for you. And if you relate to that, then you need to do your 90 day detox. You have to take those 90 days just to work on you and figure out what is this? Why am I so deeply attached to these outcomes? Ideally, in our full program, the Black Girls Hill Recovery School, but if that is not an option for you, you can go ahead and get started with the no contact kit. So that is it for now. Next month in the month of May is going to be couples month. So I will be sure to have several episodes that are dedicated just for people who are in couples, um, couple ships for you to get the extended time and focus that you are due. Since I know I talk a lot to women who struggle with love addiction, love avoidance, and love anorexia who are single. Um, your time ladies is coming next month. Um, if you are in a coupleship or marriage and you are wondering what does this stuff mean for you in the meantime, I hope that this podcast episode was helpful for those who needed to hear it at this time. If it wasn't for you, feel free to share the episode with a friend who you think does need to hear it. Um, and For everybody else, I would love to see everyone at this week's Saturday Night Live. That's it for this week. Take care of yourselves.